China's stocks are collapsing and Beijing is panicking. Last week, China's benchmark Shanghai Index plunged once again, falling 5%, wiping out 500 billion in Chinese corporate equity and triggering the dreaded snowball derivatives crash. This brought the index down by 25% in just the past two years, which is jarring considering U.S. stocks were up 10%. British stocks were flat, and Japanese stocks actually rose almost a third in those two years. In other words, it's not the world, it's China. In fact, one of the best-kept secrets about China is that it's been a black hole for investors for a generation. Chinese stocks today are below the level they were in 2007. So that's 17 lost years and counting. Why simple? President Xi took the miracle economy he inherited threw it in the gutter of government mismanagement, politicized subsidies, and authoritarian dictates. As the Wall Street Journal dryly phrased it, Xi's administration has a, quote, love-hate relationship with private companies that has fueled doubts about the country's economy. This decline is now accelerating, which is throwing Beijing's officials into panic mode because they know that there is a magic line when stocks drop so far they wipe out Chinese households. More important, they wipe out China's hilariously indebted financial system. In a recent video, I mentioned that China's swimming in debt with over 300% of GDP, so in U.S. terms, that's equivalent to almost $80 trillion of debt. Note, China has ongoing deflation driven by overcapacity in manufacturing, especially housing, meaning that the debt automatically gets bigger. So the panic kicked off with the state council, China's top ruling body, basically the emergency team. They mandated an all-of-government effort to bail out stocks, starting with tax tweaks, then banning short sales, and now moving to the big guns, so pouring money into the so-called national team of state-linked firms in the insurance and pension industry. They are reportedly even considering a 2 trillion yuan rescue package, that's about $300 billion, which is what they did last time this happened in 2015. Analysts doubt it will work this time for the simple reason that China's growth engine has been crippled for years, hidden by free government money in state-favored exporters and, above all, the housing industry. So now that those are all shaking out, as Warren Buffett used to say, when the tide goes out, you see who is swimming without a suit. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. China's ratcheting toward a nationalized stock market to go with its increasingly nationalized economy. Between anemic growth and Xi's authoritarian harassment, foreign investors are already fleeing to safer shores, Indonesia, Vietnam, even Mexico. Of course, precious few are coming to America unless Joe Biden pays them, since our policymakers cannot stop crippling domestic manufacturing on behalf of climate, equity, and unions. If they could, say, if Trump wins and can get Congress to act, then America could actually benefit from China's economic suicide. So yes, that's one more thing riding on the 2024 election. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.